They rise without warning, towering walls of water as high as a 10-story building, capable of crushing steel and vanishing as suddenly as they appear. Sailors call them monster waves. Scientists call them rogue. But by the time you see one, it's already too late. This is the story of rogue waves, the ocean's most unpredictable and deadly force. For centuries, tales of enormous, freakish waves were dismissed as sailor myths, exaggerations born from fear, fatigue, and stormy nights. But rogue waves are real. A rogue wave is defined as a wave that is more than twice the height of the surrounding sea state. They can reach heights of 70, 80, even 100 feet. Unlike tsunamis, which are triggered by earthquakes or landslides, Rogue waves form out of nowhere, often in relatively calm waters, through a process called constructive interference, where multiple smaller waves align perfectly and combine and multiply into a single massive surge. The scientific world took notice on January 1, 1995, when an oil platform in the North Sea recorded the first confirmed rogue wave. Known as the Dropner wave, it measured 25.6 meters, or 84 feet, appearing in a sea where average waves were half that height. For the first time, the myths were proven true. A rogue wave had been measured, not just feared. But long before Draupner, sailors had already faced these giants. One of the most famous encounters happened later that same year. In September 1995, the luxury ocean liner Queen Elizabeth II was navigating the North Atlantic during Hurricane Luis. The storm was ferocious, but nothing could have prepared the crew for what came next. Captain Ronald Warwick later described it as looking up at a vertical wall of water, as if the ship was heading straight into the white cliffs of Dover. The wave was estimated at 28.3 meters, or 93 feet tall. It struck the ship head on, the QE2 shuddered, but held together. Had it hit broadside, the outcome might have been a tragedy on the scale of the Titanic. But not all encounters end in survival. Many believe a rogue wave doomed the MS München, a German cargo ship lost in the Atlantic in 1978. The vessel sent out desperate distress signals during the storm. Later, a lifeboat was recovered, its metal crushed and twisted damage consistent with a sudden, massive impact. The ship and its 27 crew were never seen again. Closer to home, one of the most extreme rogue waves ever recorded occurred on November 17, 2020, in British Columbia, Canada. A buoy floating off the coast of Vancouver Island captured a wave that measured 17.6 meters, nearly 58 feet, in a sea where surrounding waves averaged just six meters. The wave wasn't the tallest ever seen, but it was one of the most statistically extreme, nearly three times higher than the surrounding seas. Experts called it an extremely rare event that only happens every 1,300 years, and it happened just miles off a peaceful Canadian coastline. The danger of rogue waves isn't just their height, it's their suddenness. They don't gradually build. They appear in an instant, crashing with unimaginable force, then vanish into the sea. Ships can be struck without warning, their windows smashed, their engines flooded, their steel twisted. Today, we're better equipped to measure and study rogue waves using satellites, weather models, and deep sea buoys. But predicting them? That's still beyond our reach. These giants form from chaotic and rare combinations of energy that defy simple forecasting. From oil rigs in the North Sea to cruise ships in the Atlantic, from forgotten cargo vessels to quiet waters off Vancouver Island, rogue waves remind us that even in the age of technology, the ocean is not tamed. It still holds secrets. It still demands respect. They rise from nowhere, 
They strike without warning, and they disappear, leaving behind only silence and the wreckage of those who dared to sail through the deep. Thank you for watching this episode from The Drowned Archives.